وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على عبد الله ورسوله نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته as always, we begin with the praise of Allah and by asking Allah to exalt the mention and grant peace to our Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, to his family and his companions. We're now up to the stage in this course on the Muslim family where we are going to start talking about the rights of our children. And we had established already when we spoke about the rights of the husband and the rights of the wife is from the hadith that is mentioned regarding uh, Salman al-Farisi radiyallahu Anhu and the advice that he gave to Abu Darda when he said, Inna li rabbika alayka haqqa, wa li nafsika alayka haqqa, wa li ahlika alayka haqqa, fa'ati kulla di haqqin haqqa. And the Prophet said, Sadaqa, Salman, indeed your Lord has a right over you. And you yourself, your body has a right over you, yourself has a right over you, and your family have rights over you. So give everyone who has a right over you their right. And so it's no surprise to learn that our children have many rights over us. So I'm going to start by asking you a question. Where do you think the rights of the children start chronologically? So what is the first right of our children? Try and think maybe around the time the child is born, or just before that, what is the very first right that our children have over us in terms of in terms of order? So inshallah, you had some time to think about that. It's very interesting that many of the scholars of Islam, they mentioned that the first right of the child is to choose a righteous spouse. So the first right of the child actually is before the child is born. In fact, it's before the child is even conceived. The first right of the child is to choose a righteous spouse. And this is indicated by the hadith in Bukhari and Muslim from the hadith of Abi Hurairah. We've heard the hadith before. عَنِ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمَ أَنَّهُ قَالْ تُنْكَحُ الْمَرَأَةُ لِأَرْبَعَةُ لِمَالِهَا وَلِحَسَبِهَا وَلِجَمَالِهَا وَلِدِينِهَا فَضْفَرْ بِذَاتِ الدِّينِ تَرِبَتْ يَدَكَ the Prophet وسلم, said a woman is married for one of four things, for her wealth, for her reputation or her family reputation, for her beauty and for her religion. So the one who wants to be successful and the one who wants to get the, the blessing and the barakah and the success, that is the person who should choose that deen. I should choose the one who is married for the sake of her religion. And this tells us that if we look at the right of children, to begin with, our children's rights start with choosing the right spouse. And if we choose the right spouse, that's the best start that we can give our children by the permission of Allah. So that's where the rights of the children begin. And this is also indicated by another hadith that we have heard, the hadith of Ma'aqil Sar and the hadith of also Anas ibn Malik uh, in different wordings, but we'll just mention one of them. Tazawwajul wadud al-walud fa'inni mukathirun bikum. Marry the woman who is loving and will bear you many children, for indeed I will boast of you, I of your, of my ummah, of my, the numbers of my ummah. Now here, this actually, this uh, hadith has a strong evidence in it for the point that we raised. And the, the strong evidence is in the hadith where it says, بِكُمْ I'm going to boast of your numbers. I'm going to boast of your numbers. Some, some of the narrations mention, بِكُمْ That I will boast of your numbers to the prophets. Some of them mention, بِكُمْ الْأُمَمْ I will boast of your numbers in front of the other nations. The Prophet ﷺ will only, would only uh, take pride in that which is good in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
So he, it's not the pure number that matters to the Prophet ﷺ for him to be pleased and for him to speak of the huge numbers of this ummah in terms of or in front of the other nations or in front of the Prophets Yawm al Qiyamah. It's the righteousness of them and the correctness of them. That's what matters to the Prophet ﷺ. So it's not the pure numbers that matter, but rather it's the numbers of righteous and upright people. And that is a strong evidence as it relates to the Prophet ﷺ saying, تَزَوَّجُ الْوَدُودِ الْوَلُودِ Marry the woman who is loving and will bear you many children. And that shows you that the, the rights of the children and or the righteousness of the children starts by choosing the right spouse. And so here, hopefully, you can see the connection between those two things, between the statement, تَزَوَّجُ الْوَدُودِ الْوَلُودِ Choosing the right wife, the one who is loving, the one who will bear you many children. And then the fact that the Prophet ﷺ will take pride in the numbers, the huge numbers of this Ummah, يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَةِ And that will only happen when they are righteous. So righteous offspring start by choosing the right spouse. The next right that our children have over us is for us to make dua to Allah even before we have children, for Allah to give us righteous offspring. Dua is something easy, it's not something difficult. It's only a few words and it doesn't require any, any hardship, it doesn't require any difficulty. And yet how many of us neglect to make dua for the righteousness of our children? And yet this is something that was from the sunan of the Anbiya, from the, 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 the established sunan of the Prophets alayhim salatu wassalam. Allah Azza wa Jal said in Surah Ali Imran, ayah number 38, هُنَالِكَ دَعَى زَكَرِيَّ رَبَّهِ قَالَ رَبِّ هَبْ لِي مِنْ لَدُنْكَ ذُرِّيَّةً طَيِّبَةً إِنَّكَ سَمِيعُ الدُّعَى Here, Zakariya called upon his Lord. He said, my Lord, give me from you ذُرِّيَّةً طَيِّبَةً Good offspring. Offspring that are طَيِّبِين That are good people. That are righteous people. SubhanAllah, from here, what we can see is we can see that the Prophets والسلام, they called upon Allah before even having children. Before even their children were conceived. They called upon Allah جل, to give them righteous children. And that is a small thing that we can do to benefit ourselves and to benefit our children. And it doesn't require any difficulty or any hardship uh, from us. And this dua, it should, not, uh, it should not be only before we have children. This dua should continue throughout the life of our children, that we continue to make dua for them. And we continue to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless them. And uh, one of the beautiful examples of this is in Surah Ibrahim, the example of Ibrahim. وَإِذْ قَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ رَبِّ جَعَلْ هَذَا الْبَلَدَ آمِنًا وَجْنُبَنِي وَبَنِيَّ أَنْ نَعْبُدَ الْأَصْنَامِ رَبِّ إِنَّهُنَّ أَضْلَلْنَ كَثِيرًا مِنَ النَّاسِ فَمَنْ تَبِعَنِي فَإِنَّهُ مِنِّي وَمَنْ عَصَانِي فَإِنَّكَ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ Allah Azza wa Jal told us about the dua of Ibrahim. When Ibrahim said, my Lord, make this city a place of safety and keep me and my children away from worshipping idols. SubhanAllah, this uh, dua of Ibrahim was made, and Allah Azza wa knows best, after he had uh, Ismail. Because we are told in the next ayah from what Ibrahim said, رَبَّنَا إِنِّي أَسْكَنْتُ مِنْ ذُرِّيَّةِ بِوَادٍ غَيْرِ ذِي زَرْعٍ عِنْدَ بَيْتِكَ الْمُحَرَّمِ رَبَّنَا لِيُقِيمُ الصَّلَاةِ فَجَعَلْ أَفْئِدَةً مِنَ النَّاسِ تَهْوِي إِلَيْهِمْ وَرْزُقْهُمْ مِنَ الثَّمَرَاتِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَشْكُرُونَ He said, my Lord, I have left some of my offspring in a valley that has no vegetation near to your sacred house, my Lord, so that they can perform the prayer. So cause a group of people to come to them and provide them from the fruits so that they may be grateful. SubhanAllah, look at how the concern that Ibrahim had for his family and the dua that he made for them. So he made the dua for Allah Azza wa to keep them away from a shirk, from making partners with Allah. And that's of course the most important thing. 
And that's the greatest thing that a parent can ask Allah Azza wa Jal for their child, for Allah Azza wa Jal to keep them away from making a partner with Allah, to make them good Muslims, people of Tawheed, people who worship Allah Azza wa Jal alone. This is the most important thing that any parent can want for their child. And it's way more important than their worldly life. But Ibrahim didn't neglect to make dua even for their needs in the worldly life. And Ibrahim subhanAllah, he left his family in that place in Mecca salah for the sake of the salah. And that shows you how important the prayer is in the religion of Islam. And then he made dua, O oh Allah, cause a group of people to come to them and provide them from the fruits so that they may be grateful. He even made dua for what was the, the maslaha for them, the masalih, dunyawiyah, the things that they needed in their dunya, but he linked it to the religion. That, O oh Allah, give them these things so that they may be grateful towards you. So it wasn't purely for the sake of the worldly life, but give them these things that they need in this world so that they can worship you. And that's how the dunya should be. It should be a servant for you in your deen. It should be something that helps you to, to, to progress and to get near to Allah and your religion. So he made dua for them even in, this, uh, in these needs that they had. And, t and then the ayat continue until we are told that Ibrahim said, رَبِّ جَعَلْنِي مُقِيمَ الصَّلَاةِ وَمِنْ ذُرِّيَّتِي رَبَّنَا وَتَقَبَّلْ دُعَاءَ رَبَّنَا اغْفِرْ لِي وَلِوَالِدَيَّ وَلِمُؤْمِنِينَ يَوْمَ يَقُومُ الْحِسَابِ My Lord, make me from those who establish the prayer. And likewise my offspring. And my Lord, accept my dua. My Lord, forgive me. And my parents and the Muslims or the believers on the day when the accounting will be taken. So this is from the most beautiful dua that a parent can make for their children, the dua of Ibrahim, which Nubani wa baniya and na'bud al-asnam, keep me and my children away from worshipping idols. And the dua of Ibrahim, Rabbi ja'alni muqeem as-salati wa min zurriyati, Rabbana wa taqabbal dua, Rabbana aghfir li wa li walidayya wa li mu'mineen, yawma yaqoom al-hisab. My Lord, make me from those who establish the prayer and from my offspring, and my Lord accept the dua. So to make, to make the children from the people who establish the prayer, they keep away from shirk and they establish the prayer. And also Ibrahim made dua for them in what they needed in the worldly life and made dua for them to be from the people who are grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So all of this is from the evidence of the sunnah of the prophets alayhim salatu wassalam as it relates to making dua for their children, both before they have children and all through their child's life, making dua for them and asking Allah Azza wa Jal for them, for most importantly, their akhirah, meaning their tawheed, the, the worshipping of Allah alone, and their performance of the prayer and so on, and also for what they need in the dunya on the condition that that makes them from the people who are grateful. We have another example also in the Quran. We have many examples, but another example we can highlight of the dua that a parent makes for the child or a dua that a parent makes in relation to their children is the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal وَوَصَّيْنَا الْإِنسَانَ بِوَالِدَيْهِ إِحْسَانًا حَمَلَتْهُ أُمُّهُ كُرْحًا وَوَضَعَتْهُ كُرْحًا وَحَمْلُهُ وَفِصَالُهُ ثَلَاثُونَ شَهْرًا And we commanded man to be to have ihsan, to be good to his parents or to be have excellence towards his parents. His mother carried him in hardship and gave birth to him in hardship. And the time that she carried him and the time that she weaned him is 30 months in length. <laughs> Until when this person reaches their age of maturity and they reach 40 years of age. When he reached the age of 40 years old and he called upon Allah, My Lord, give me the ability to be grateful to you for the blessings that you have blessed me with and those which you bless my parents with. SubhanAllah, look at the beautiful dua to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us grateful for the blessings of Allah. And our children are a blessing from Allah Azza wa Jal. Make us grateful for the blessings that Allah has given us. And subhanAllah, this shows you that even though Allah is the one that gave you the gift, without the help of Allah, you can't even be grateful for the gifts that Allah has given you. Oh Allah, make me grateful for the blessings that you have given me and those that you give my parents. And give me the ability to do righteous deeds that please you. 
وأصلح لي في ذريتي and make my children righteous or correct my children bring about righteousness in my children all of these can be taken from the word وأصلح لي في ذريتي bring about righteousness me through my children إِنِّي تُبْتُ إِلَيْكَ وَإِنِّي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ I have repented to you, and indeed I am among the Muslims, those who have submitted to you. So this is another beautiful example of a dua that a parent can make for their child. وَأَصْلِحْ لِي فِي ذُرِّيَّتِي And that would apply whether that uh, child, even whether that child is righteous, or even if that child is, has gone astray or has gone away from what the parent would want. This sentence, وَأَصْلِحْ لِي فِي ذُرِّيَّتِي It would apply to all of them. Bring about righteousness from my offspring. وأصلح لي في ذريتي. إني توبت إليك. Indeed, I have repented to you. وإني من المسلمين. And I'm one of the Muslims who have submitted to you in Islam. So, so far we've talked about two rights of the children. The right of choosing a righteous spouse. And the right of the, of the child for the parent to make dua for them before they are conceived, after they are conceived, after they are born, and all the way throughout their life. From before they are even Conceived all the way until the end of their life, the parent continues to make dua for their child. And that's from the most important reasons of success as a parent in terms of the way that you look after your child and, and the outcome that you get from that by the permission of Allah Azza wa Still talking about the rights of the children that come before birth. From the rights of the children that come before birth are rights, one particular right that relates to the etiquettes of intimacy. Abdullah ibn Abbas radiyallahu anhuma narrated Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Law anna ahadahum idha arada an yatiya ahlahu Qal Bismillah Allahumma jannibna ash-shaytan Wa jannib ash-shaytan ma razaqtana Fa innahu in yuqaddar Baynahuma waladun fi thalik Lam yadurrahu shaytanun abada This hadith narrated by al-Bukhari and Muslim Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma narrated from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he said that if a person, if one among them, when he went to fulfill his desire with his wife, if he were to say, Bismillah, in the name of Allah, O oh Allah, keep the shaitan away from us. وَجَنِّبِ الشَّيْطَانَ مَا رَزَقْتَنَا And keep the shaitan away from what you provide for us, I from our children. Then if Allah decreed for them to have a child from that action of theirs, the shaitan would never hurt them ever. Subhanallah, what a beautiful etiquette, a small remembrance. And this shows you that the remembrance of Allah is in every situation. This is the time when, in terms of intimacy, you would think this is the last time that a person would remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And yet look at the rewards of remembering Allah azza wa jal, that before the person uh, engages in that, they would say, Bismillah, in the name of Allah, O Allah, Keep the shaitan away from us and keep the shaitan away from what you provide for us, i.e. the children that, that, we, that we might have from this or the child that we might have from this. And if Allah Azza wa decrees them a child from that action of theirs, then the child will never ever be hurt by the shaitan. So what a right it is over the child for just a few words, that right it is over the parent for the child, that the, that the parent just says those few words at that time Perhaps Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would keep the shaitan away from the child because of this action of the parents. And so truly the parents, it's not right, it's layambari, it's not befitting for them to forget this dua and then to, you know, subhanAllah, they, they might have the consequences of that as it relates to the shaitan affecting, affecting their child. Now, what does it mean though for the shaitan to affect the child? What does that actually mean? Al-Imam al-Nawawi, rahimahullah ta'ala, he narrates from Al-Qadi, Iyad, uh, rahimahumullah ta'ala, and he said, وَلَمْ يَحْمِلْهُ أَحَدٌ عَلَى الْعُمُومِ فِي جَمِيعِ الضَّرَرِ وَالْوَسْوَسَةِ وَالْإِغْوَاءِ Al-Qadi, Iyad, he said, no one from the scholars held this hadith to be completely general, meaning the shaitan will never harm them in any way, will never give them any waswasa, will never give them any cause of deviation or misguidance. None of them held this to be absolute in every way. Rather, the Prophet ﷺ is talking about specific kinds of harm, specific uh, I mean, specific things that, that relates to that child. But it's not complete. It doesn't mean the shaitan will never ever harm them in any way 
and will never ever whisper to them, they will never suffer waswasa, they will never suffer harm, they will never suffer misguidance. Some of them said that it means that the shaitan will never possess the child. Some of them said that it means that the shaitan will not misguide uh, the child and he completely away from the path of Allah Azza wa Jal and other things. But the ulama here, what's important we take from the statement of Al-Qadi Ayyad rahimahullah ta'ala is that this isn't, isn't something am, it isn't something general, then it means that they will not be harmed by the shaitan ever in anything. But it means yani, a particular kind of harm that will not happen. But still, even, even if it is a specific kind of harm that will not happen, at the end of the day, it is absolutely a small thing for a parent to do that can benefit their child in a huge way. From the rights that the child have over the parents is for the parents to do righteous deeds before they are born and after they are born and to keep away from the haram. And from the evidences for this is the ayah we mentioned in Surah At-Tur وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَاتَّبَعَتْهُمْ ذُرِّيَّتُهُمْ بِإِيمَانٍ أَلْحَقْنَا بِهِمْ ذُرِّيَّتَهُمْ وَمَا أَلَتْنَاهُمْ مِنْ عَمَلِهِمْ مِنْ شَيْءٍ كُلُّ أُمْرِئٍ بِمَا كَسَبَ رَحِيم Those who believe and their offspring follow them in Iman. We will cause their offspring to reach them and to, to join together with them, to be joined together with them in paradise. So ultimately the righteousness of the parents is something which can have a very positive effect upon the children. And that's what we understand from this ayah. It's one of the things we can take from this ayah in Surah At-Tur, that the righteousness of the parents can have a big effect upon, upon the children. And likewise, in Surah Al-Kahf, Allah Azza wa Jal told us, وَكَانَ أَبُوهُمَا صَالِحًا Those two orphan boys who they had uh, a treasure that was buried underneath that wall and Khidr and Musa, they came and they repaired the wall. What did Allah say for the reason that those children got that treasure? وَكَانَ أَبُوهُمَا صَالِحًا Their father was a righteous man. And likewise in Surah Ali Imran in ayah number 34 where Allah said ذُرِّيَّةً بَعْضُهَا مِنْ بَعْضُ وَاللَّهُ سَمِيعٌ عَلِيمٌ offspring, some of them from others, meaning that the righteousness of the offspring came from the righteousness of the parents. Wallahu Samir Alim, and Allah is all hearing and all knowing. So there is no doubt that the righteousness of a parent is something which can have a big positive effect upon their child. Now ultimately we need to understand something. We need to understand that Allah said, Wala taziru waziratun wizra akhra. Nobody will be made to bear the burden of another person. Nobody will be made to carry the burden of another person. We're not saying that the child will be punished or because of their parents or their parents' actions. But when the parent is righteous, this gives a great deal of barakah to the parent and to their children. And the benefits of the righteousness of the parent can continue on to be blessings for the children by the permission of Allah Azza wa Jal. So everyone will be, will be treated fairly and everyone will be given a fair chance by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But there's no doubt when a parent does righteous deeds before the child is born, after the child is born, when the child is young, when the child is older, this is a reason for barakah to come to that child and a reason for that child to have ease and blessings. And there are so many ayat and ahadith which indicate this and we've mentioned some of them. For example, the statement of Allah min ba'd that when Allah just spoke about Ali Imran and he spoke about the wife of Imran and her oath that she made and Allah just said min they, are, they are an offspring that some of them came from others and that the righteousness of the, the, the parents led to the righteousness of the offspring so give your child the best start I mean give an example in the worldly life if you were to save up some money for your child and put that money sort of in a trust to help your child. Does that mean your child will never be poor? Doesn't mean your child will never be poor. Doesn't mean that they will, but it gives them the best possible start that you could give them in the worldly life. And you saved some money for them, you made a pot for them so that they could uh, buy the things that they needed so that they could manage maybe in the transition between their education and their job. And you had saved that money for them. It doesn't mean that you're gonna protect them from poverty but it does mean that you have done the best that you could do for them. And ultimately you can't say you've done the best for your children unless you are that righteous parent that sets that example for your children and tries to 
to, to, to do good deeds and righteous deeds that bring about good for your children and bring about good for your family and barakah for them. And likewise, we can take a principle. And this principle, you have to understand it very, it's, you have to be precise in it. That the haram that a parent does can have an effect upon their child. Now, again, how do we understand that in the context of the statement of Allah No one will bear the burden of another person. So no one will bear the sin of another person. Nobody will carry the sin of another person. No child will carry the sin of their father. No child will be punished for the sins that their father or their mother did. But that doesn't mean that there won't be a consequence and an effect to the haram that is done. So let me give you an example, again, outside of the children and the parents, just to kind of illustrate what I mean here. If you take the example of someone who is smoking, the person who is smoking, the sin is their sin. And they uh, smoke in front of someone else and that person doesn't, you know, doesn't encourage that or doesn't do anything to facilitate that then the sin is the sin of the person who is smoking, right? It's not the sin of the one who, it's not their fault. It's nothing to do with them. But does that mean that that one who is there will not have consequences? Does that mean that they, they won't get sick? No, they could get sick from it. They could suffer from it. They could have a sickness or a problem happens to them because of it. Because ultimately there's a difference between carrying the sin of someone and suffering negative consequences. We all suffer negative consequences because of things that people do. For example, in the hadith of one of the mothers of the believers when she said, الصالحون, Will we be destroyed, O Messenger of Allah, when there are righteous people among us? The Prophet said, نعم إذا كثر الخبث. Yes, if the, if the corruption in society increases. This is another example of the fact that a person can suffer consequences because of things that other people did. That doesn't mean that they will have the sin of it. That doesn't mean that they'll be treated unfairly. They will have a, a chance to make it right. They will have a chance to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they will not carry the sin of their parents. But that also doesn't mean that they won't suffer consequences. So ultimately your children can suffer consequences because of the haram that you do. And that could have effect, an effect upon you, upon your family, and upon your children. But they will never carry your sin. They will never carry the sin of what you do. But ultimately, they can be affected by the consequences of the actions that you take. And hopefully that is clear in distinguishing between those two things. That's what Allah made easy for me to mention in this episode. And in the next episode, inshallah ta'ala, we're going to continue with the rights of the children. We have many rights still to talk about. And until now, we haven't even reached the topic of the rights that come after the child is born. That's coming up in the next, next episode, inshallah ta'ala. And Allah Azza wa Jal knows best. Wa salatu wa salam ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum. If you're enjoying these videos and you'd like to keep up to date with all of the courses we're going to be running, make sure you head over to amau at home dot com